Good afternoon, Facebook. Christine Barconi here, and I'm here at Ohio Health with a very special doctor right now, Dr. Gastaldo. Thank you for joining us today. We're here to do a live Q&A about the coronavirus because there are still a lot of frequently asked questions, and we want to put them all in one place for you right now. So can you just start by explaining coronavirus, what it is, its symptoms, and what it does to the body? So let's talk about coronaviruses in general. Coronaviruses were actually first identified in the 1960s. When you say the word coronavirus, that's like saying a car. There's different types of cars. There's a Chevy Corvette, there's a Lexus ES. So when you say the word coronavirus, that's a family of viruses. We've identified human coronaviruses first in the 1960s, and then throughout time, we've identified other human coronaviruses, and then we've identified coronaviruses that originated from animals, specifically bats. So the first coronavirus that we identified from animals was in 2003 approximately, and that was the first coronavirus, SARS, which everybody's familiar with. The next coronavirus was MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. That's a different coronavirus. And then most recently, uh, this past winter in 2019, the novel coronavirus in the Wuhan area. So again, novel basically means is that this coronavirus has never been seen before. This is a coronavirus that we believe originated from animals at an animal market in China. So coronavirus, the human coronaviruses that we've known about since the 1960s are the viruses that are associated with the common colds. Mm -hmm. And everybody here is very, very familiar with the common cold symptoms associated with that. And um, what we know about this coronavirus is, since it's novel, keep in mind that there is a lot about this coronavirus since it's never been discovered before that we do not know. Mm -hmm. So we are learning every day. Every day we know more. Today we know more than we did when this virus was first identified. Uh, close to 90% of the molecular structure of this coronavirus is exactly the same from the 2002-2003 SARS virus. So we do know that. Um, recently in China, as everybody knows, there have been close to, I think the last number that I saw was in the 80,000 range of people who had this. Uh, recently in the Journal of the American Medical Association, they did a very nice detailed epidemiology paper on over 70,000 people in China who had the diagnosis of this novel coronavirus. And there's really, for the listeners, there's a lot of good information there that I think is important to know uh, uh, based on epidemiology. For example, over 80% of people who were diagnosed with this coronavirus had what was categorized as mild symptoms. People who were not hospitalized, people who lived over 80%. That's very, very important to know. Mm -hmm. Um, over 80% of 70,000 people who had this had mild symptoms. The people who became ill, people who were hospitalized and people who died of coronavirus were people who had older age and other underlying health conditions such as lung disease, heart disease, and diabetes. Symptoms of coronavirus uh, are just like they can start off as very much like any other common cold. You could have a headache, a sore throat, a dry non-productive cough. Sometimes people can have diarrhea with it. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to other cold viruses, other coronaviruses that we've been dealing with since the 1960s. And so we're calling this one COVID-19, correct? So, so the official, so th let's, that's a great question. Let's, let's clear up some terminology. Great. And the analogy I'll use is HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. HIV is the name of the virus that causes AIDS. The name of the virus uh, that was recently identified in China is called SARS-CoV-2, SARS coronavirus 2. That is the name of the virus. The name of the disease caused by this virus is COVID-19, coronavirus disease 19. That's the name of the disease caused by this virus. Got it. Okay, so we, we talked about the symptoms, we talked about terminology. Should people here in the United States, how should they be feeling? Should they be worried? Should they be nervous? How are you feeling as a doctor? And um, what's the general feeling that we should have here in the United States about COVID-19? So as everybody knows, the virus is here and uh, it is expected to be in Ohio and in our community. The virus is here. Um, my general, and again, I'm a man of science. My general feel is as follows. 
Uh, like I alluded to earlier, over 80% of people who had this in China had very mild disease. And I am always a b believer of science and knowledge is power. So I think for the listeners and people in Central Ohio, realize it is here and we have to be very cognizant of very basic things that we already know and we can approve on when it comes to infection prevention measures, such as hand sanitization. Sanitizing your hands often with either an ethanol-based hand product or washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds, especially if you're out in the public where you're touching a lot of areas where people may have coughed and sneezed on. The virus is obtained or caught very much similar to influenza. The way to avoid it is to avoid having someone coughing and sneezing on you when they have this virus. And the other thing too, if you are out in the public and you're out in the areas where th things are commonly touched, the way you get infection with a virus is having that virus come in contact with cells of your respiratory symptom. So if this chair, hypothetically, was covered with this virus and I just touched it, I'm not going to get the infection. The virus has to be introduced to my respiratory symptoms. Touching your eyes, the tear ducts can get into your, the tears can get into your uh, lacrimal, uh, connected to your sinuses, they get into it that way. So mm -hmm. not making a conscious effort not to touch your eyes, your nose, or your mouth is very important when you're out in the public. Other tips I usually tell people, and we could do a better job at this as a society, is when you are symptomatic with cold symptoms, flu symptoms, stay home. We don't want you to go to work. We don't want you to bring that virus to places where people can get it uh, and be exposed to it. Taking care of yourself is very, very important. Uh, proper sleep, hydration. You know, we, everybody has had a cold before, and chances are everybody has had a coronavirus infection. And the things that your parents always tell you, stay home, stay hydrated, uh, uh, chicken soup, chicken broth, those are things that the vast majority of people who are going to get this virus need to do. Spring break is coming up. There will be a lot of travel to a lot of popular tourist destinations. That's something we touched on yesterday. Disney, different beaches, different things like that. People are coming from all over the world. What can people do um, to protect their children or to make sure their children are practicing good hygiene? Great question. And again, all of those things about I talked about before with hand hygiene. I was recently in Chicago, and what I did is uh, when I was at the airport and on public transportation, I sent my iPhone alarm to go off to remind me to hand sanitize my hands every 15 or 20 minutes. And you have to make the conscious effort to do that when you're out in areas where there's a lot of people congregating. Mm -hmm. Uh, avoid having people uh, cough and sneeze on you. In fact, like I said earlier, if you have those symptoms, try not to be out in public places. Make sure that you are up to date on your vaccination, specifically influenza. Influenza is out there today. Uh, according to the most recent CDC posting that I just looked at on Instagram, there's approximately over 18,000 people who have died from influenza complications since this flu season began. So those common things, you're more likely, what's out there to make you sick today, the, the thing that's more likely to be coming across of now is influenza and not this coronavirus. So. Um, if you're traveling, it's very, very important, especially for overseas travel, to go to the CDC website. The CDC has a website that lists different countries that are on different levels of travel advisory. Level four is the highest level. The Milan, Italy, Venice, Italy areas are level four, and that basically is the same as a natural disaster. Do not go there. Level three means only go there if you have a good reason to go there. <clears throat> and, in the and in the world, on the map, that looks, what's level uh, two, three, and four is China, all of Italy, um, the Korean Peninsula, uh, Japan, Iran. Those are all areas that uh, have travel concern. Within the United States, at this point in time, there is no travel restrictions or travel bans to every area. So what I tell people, my advice is, double down and think about and focus on the common sense things like hand sanitization, cough etiquette, taking care of yourself, et cetera, et cetera, not touching your eyes, your nose, or your mouth, and to go to the CDC website to look for travel restrictions that may arise. If you decide, for example, Spain, there is no travel advisory for Spain today. 
if you make the decision to go overseas, you also have to be concerned that potentially if you go overseas and something happens, you have to deal with things that may come up on the Spanish government's side of things mm -hmm. and then coming back to this country when you come back in. For the listeners that are out there, uh, there is a valuable service that is available through the State Department. And it's called, uh, it's basically, you could go, um, it's called uh, STEP, the Safe Traveler um, Enrollment Program, S-T-E-P, Safe Traveler Enrollment Program. Go to Google and look at it. It's through the State Department. And when you go on there, you register your name, your phone number, your email, your passport number, and where you're going. Mm -hmm they will connect that your name with the embassy or consulate in the country that you go to. So if something comes up for um, a natural disaster or a virus thing where people were airlifted or whatever, the State Department will notify you if you're registered for that. It's a free service and it's uh, something that I think is very much underutilized that should be used under the current situation in the world. That's, a re that's really good advice. Also speaking of travel, you said you were in Chicago recently. I saw this in San Francisco as well, masks. Do they serve a purpose for people, everyday travelers? You're sitting next to somebody on an airport airplane and you have a mask on or they have a mask on. Do they serve a purpose? Do they help? Masks are not recommended for public use to be used. Let me, let me make some comments about the mask. Uh, first of all, in, in the hospital, the mask that we specifically use for people who have this virus or somebody like uh, tuberculosis, it is a mask that has to be fitted for. It's not something that you could buy and properly wear without being fitted for it. There's a lot of things in use of the mask. For example, men with any kind of facial hair, the mask it does not properly work. Mm -hmm. so, so that is the first thing. The second thing is, right now our, our supplies are fine, but the mask should really be reserved as a society for healthcare systems. The mask uh, really um, don't protect you from it. The mask, the surgical mask that people use with um, holes in the side, uh, the virus can get in that way. So the masks really don't do anything. Perhaps they may stop you from touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth as much, but masks are not recommended. And at this point in time, they should not be done in the public. Um, also public events, we, a lot of people, there's a petition going on right now for here in Columbus, Ohio, talking about the Arnold Sports um, Festival. And should we be having these big, huge public events where there are lo large crowds? March Madness is something that's also come up. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a good question. And I, I could tell you internationally what's going on with that too. There's a lot of precedence for those things going on. Uh, for example, most recently in uh, Geneva, a big event they have there is the Geneva Auto Show. That was canceled. In the country of France, they have forbidden any kind of public gathering of over 5,000 people. Um, in Catholic churches in France, they are not uh, giving communion in the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, um, there was a, a big electronics uh, convention in Barcelona, Spain, which was canceled. There was a medical conference in Japan canceled. So there is precedence for that, and some of those uh, cancellations have been in countries that are not on high level. So people going to the Arnold, that that is a good thing that's going on. There's a lot of people there. Uh, there's a lot of people on top of each other. There's a big international presence for people. The Arnold Classic Weekend is my understanding. This is the biggest tourism weekend for Columbus. And, and if you go there, you really have to watch your P's and Q's and follow infection prevention measures to a T, like the hand sanitization, not touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. And, and staying away from people who are symptomatic with a cold. I would hope for anybody listening, if you have cold symptoms, whether it be influenza or any other kind of cold virus, my recommendation to anybody listening to this is not to go out in public and to stay home and take care of yourself. All right, Laura, any questions from our viewers that are being asked that we haven't touched on yet? Great question. Um, at this point in time, that has not um, been proven. Um, you know, the, this coronavirus did come from uh, an animal market. Uh, it's hypothesized it's come from bats, but I am unaware of any international uh, publications showing that pets can get this. I did hear something uh, through my podcasting that there was a thing of a dog in Thailand, but that has not been a concern at all in China where they've actually had this. Okay. Um, is there anything else, Laura? Oh, we pretty much covered it. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Let's go through the big takeaways one more time. Sanitize. So the, the big takeaways is um, basic stuff that we already know. 
hand sanitization, do not touch your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. And if you are sick with cold symptoms or flu symptoms, please stay home, take care of yourself, and don't go out in public. Other things, when you're out in public, if that's a situation where you have a cough or a sneeze, it's important to have coughing and sneezing etiquette where you cough into your elbow and if you use a tissue to dispose of that properly and not allow, th allow, not allow that to throw around, just put it away and put it in the trash. All right, doctor, thank you so much. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We will have more um, coming up on NBC4, probably at 5 and 6 as well. Ted's here to take over and talk to the doctor, so we'll be sure to have more on that on the broadcast side as well. NBC4i.com slash coronavirus is where you can go for all of your concerns. There's a link to that in the description of the video. I'm also going to do a story including all of the links that the doctor just talked about as far as um, from the State Department and different things. Really great advice. We appreciate that and we will see you guys later. Bye.